Hi, everybody. Welcome to Mark's Backyard Birds. Oh, work today. Should I say Backyard Bats? Today's episode, we are talking about the greatly misunderstood and often maligned uh, flying mammal, the only true flying mammal there is, and those those are the bats. Uh, a lot of people want to attract bats to their, their backyard, and they won't help doing that. And so I created this video to both give you information about bats uh, and let you make your own decision and how uh, you're how much you're willing to go to help the bats and what what you can do to improve your backyard for them. The guest of honor today. This is a drawing of a red bat, one of the more common bats that occur in urban areas. Uh, I think, of course, you do. I'm here in Missouri, and I am basing most of my uh, uh, bat species that I'm going to be talking about are uh, the ones that are more commonly found here. Missouri, by the way, has 16 species of bats that occur here. Some of them are in, endangered. Some of them are uh, have greatly declined, and the numbers are, are, have dipped to way below what they used to be, and people want to help them. So what do bats need to to help them out? Well, just like all animals, food, water, and shelter. So the bats that we have are all insect eaters, and that's true of most of North America. I know you, if you've watched nature specials and things, you hear about fruit bats and pollinating bats and vampire bats. We have none of those here in the uh, the heart of the country and all across the northern part of the country. But the, the, those bats, those other bats occur much further to our south, like in the desert, uh, not on the, the border states and places like that. So those other species and fruit bats really worldwide uh, in a lot of other countries. So here we're talking about the insect eating bats. And yes, they do eat a lot of mosquitoes. When people say, oh, you know, the old Purple Martins can eat 3,000 mosquitoes a day, that has never been scientifically proven. Bats do eat lots of mosquitoes. So if you're wanting some help with mosquito control, um, the, encouraging bats in your yard is a really good thing. Will they eminently eliminate the problem? No. But they, I mean, there's some numbers that say that uh, a, a, a single bat can eat 600 mosquitoes in an hour or 300 mosquitoes an hour. I've seen all kinds of numbers out there. But the truth, you know, they're nocturnal. And so are the mosquitoes are out at night. And so it makes sense that they're the ones that are going to uh, eat them. Now, remember, if you're at the buffet line, are you going to pick up that big old chicken wing? Or are you going to pick up every little teeny grain of rice there? You know, and, and, and bats are going to eat larger insects that they can catch uh, as well, too. So, the, you know, different flying insects at night, the bats are there. So they they need food, water, and shelter. If you plant with native plants and, and encourage the propagation of, of insects and, you know, uh, laying their eggs on your plants and having caterpillars and then moths and, cat and, and butterflies, things like that, all these insects being produced by native plants will help the bats. But water is tricky. They drink water on the wing. They don't land to drink the water. They scoop water as they fly. So your water source can't just be a little bird bath. Your water source needs to be um, somewhere like seven feet long is what they estimate. So if you live near a stream or you have, if you have ponds near you or a lake near you, uh, they say within oh, a half a mile, quarter of a mile in there, then they, they, that's really beneficial to the bats where they're going to roost and, and have babies and things like that. So food, water, and shelter. So shelter, they do day roost uh, at, at, at many trees. Some actually uh, roost in clumps of leaves out on uh, the end of a limb or a heavy clump of leaves in, in, uh, on a tree. Uh, but a lot of them like dead trees where there's bark there's uh, and, and there's access to holes in the tree, the into the heartwood of the tree is open up, cracked open, places like that, they like it to be dark. Yes, that now that part's true. They do they do like it dark. And yes, they cannot take off flying from the ground. They have to crawl up on a structure and fall off to start flying. And that's why they, they roost upside down um, uh, and under peeled away wood like a a, a, a a white oak tree that the bark peels out a lot, peels away. A lot of times you'll find them tucked up underneath there during the day. A lot of people find them uh, behind their shutters on their house. And the only indication they know they're there is there's droppings on, on the floor. So, and they, those are 
you know, to classic locations. Well, if you want to encourage them to roost and you know that you've got them in your area, you see them flying, at, 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 especially at sunset, you see them flying around, then a, a, a bat house may actually be very beneficial to you. And they're, it, when, it, when it comes to bat houses, I tell people all the time, they are far more hit or miss. And if they're built correctly, and I notice I say that, that they, they, they need to be uh, have ventilation in them. Bats like it hot. They do like the interior of those houses to be hot. So when you're mounting a bat house, they, Batcon International, batcon.org, if you want to visit their site, is a great, great resource. And they've just completed a, a long 10-year study uh, with a lot of the bat houses and, and what gets used and what doesn't get used. So they are truly hit or miss, but we find that if you mount them on the side of a house or a barn or a structure or even a concrete <laughs> structure, they they tend to get used more than in trees. And in trees, of course, they face predators because black rat snakes can get into them just like they do bluebird boxes and bird nests. They get in and eat the bats. So uh, trees are not their favorite. Plus, trees tend to be more shaded uh, the, uh, most of the hours than uh, on the side of a building does. So they want it hot. So you want to make sure you mount your house on the, the south side, the southeast, south, southwest. That area where it gets a lot of sun. Um, they do like it hot there, but it needs to be properly ventilated. This box here, you can see the cut here, allows some extra ventilation. And this one as well, there's, there's extra ventilation there, and they need that. And they what they have found, too, is they do not recommend... Uh, Batcon doesn't recommend single chamber bat houses. These little small bat houses. They, they, their measurements. They say it's pretty much a minimum for them is like, oh, twenty four by sixteen, you know, something like that. And you can have multi chamber in the boxes, or you, you, know, you can have a single chamber, two chambers. And part of that's meant for them to be able to move around uh, for temperature regulation. But they, that like we said, they like it hot, but they need to be able to move around there and get ventilation. So uh, a, a, a multi-chambered box is much, much favored over a single chambered box. So up high, uh, the, the mount, the minimum 10 feet, 12 to 20 is highly recommended. If you, the higher you can get it, the better uh, up on the side of a structure like that. And then, of course, the other question comes into what color should I paint the house? Because they do like it hot. So you guys, way to the north, you want your bat houses to be black. And, you know, if you're average, like they, they, they use uh, mid-July temperatures. If your average mid-July temperature is below 90, then they recommend them black. And then the, the upper tier uh, Midwest states like us, they they recommend them to be anywhere from a, a darker brown to a medium brown. And then the further south you go, uh, a lighter brown. And in the desert southwest and in the de in very hot areas, they recommend them to be white. So that that color can helps with that temperature inside. So bad houses, you know, can be absolutely uh, great things, but. When I say they are hit or miss, I truly, truly mean that. They, uh, they're, it's not a birdhouse is almost, well, a lot of the times going to get occupants, whether it's a wren or you know house sparrow or whatever. But bat houses, it, it you. You put them up and you hope for the best. Now, another thing that Batcon is dead set against, and that's put any kind of uh, cloth on the inside or mesh on the uh, inside of the box for them to climb on. They don't need that. They do want, as long as that, uh, the wood is rough or uh, scuffed up a bit, that's what they recommend instead of, uh, and know that those, that mesh and stuff can get wet and it can uh, uh, probably breed bacteria in there. They don't want that. They just want the, uh, the, the rough wood. Now, why are bats in decline? Part of it is, uh, of course, change in the environment. There are there are less uh, flying insects than there used to be for them, and the other, of course, and then whether that's in, in natural causes or pesticides is probably you know, definitely a combination of both of those. But there have been some diseases break out in them. Uh, white nose disease is, is a one that really takes its toll on bats that congregate in big numbers like those that hibernate in caves in southern Missouri and places they, they and they they feel like they're turning the corner and and, and hopefully uh, starting to recover from that so the, hopefully their numbers are starting to build and uh, habitat management and they 
you, things that you can do to help. You know, you said encourage insects, water sources for them, uh, day day roost chambers uh, for the roosting chambers, like the ones we're showing you. These bat boxes, nesting colonies occur in much bigger structures, and and you know old barns. And, and things like that, that and, and, they, and unfortunately, they do get in people's attics, and you can't have them removed. And I've had people had them uh, put up a bat house on the outside of their house, and once they got them out, sealed up the the, the places they were getting in, and the bats used the bat houses. They wanted to keep the benefits of the insect and mosquito consumption, but not lose them all the t- all together. So, but you don't want them roosting in your house or droppings are not healthy. And okay, the the the, the one. The, I haven't brought up, of course, is the chance of rabies. Now, you've probably heard that they can carry rabies. Yes, pretty much all mammals in North America can carry, can carry rabies. The percentage of bats that actually carry rabies is 1%, less than 1%, really, technically. And uh, the encounters with a bat, if you got the chances are that low for there to be a, have the bat to have rabies, the chances of encountering one is near, near zero. Uh, but the, the rules of thumb are simple. Don't pick up a bat. Whenever the young, the, the, the females can fly with the baby bats on them, attached to them for a certain length of time until they get too heavy. And then she has to leave them quite often at the base of a tree. And then she can go feed uh, and then come back to nurse them. And then uh, they, they can crawl up the tree and then fall off and start flying when they get, they get enough strength in them. So just don't handle any wild animal. There's no reason for you to touch a wild animal, especially uh, if you were to get bit or something like that, because they do have sharp teeth. One thing I really wanted to show you, and I love this, I, I bought this for uh, a daughter's school project a few years back. And this is... Let's get over here. This a bat skeleton that uh, is pretty cool. It's, it's called a plasto mount. It's cast in, in, in plastic. And we have a lot of them at the Science Museum where I worked. And I, I, I was so impressed by it, I got one. And, and it shows you how they, they fly. Their wings are quite a bit different from mammal wings. Their, their wings are literally their fingers the bones of their fingers, and then the, the membrane uh, between them, uh, whereas you know, bird wings are their whole arms. So that's uh, a, a cool difference of them, but they are truly fascinating creatures, and we really do need to help them. So uh, if you, if you want to help, bless you, and uh, consider a bad house. Uh, make sure that, like your landscaping is proper, and uh, if you have the ability to provide a source of water, that helps even more. So I know in college when we were trapping them for study, uh, we uh, set up mist nets along creeks and streams, and we would catch some of that and get a chance to, to study them and uh, turn them loose. So a great idea for a program. I hope you like bats because bats are wonderful, wonderful creatures. So until next time, let's talk birds.